Okay, in this segment we're looking at confidence intervals for the population mean with sigma known. And so the lifetime of a certain brand of electric light bulb is known to have a standard deviation of 55 hours. Now whenever you read this we have to be a little bit cautious. Some problems will have a standard deviation of the population other times the standard deviation is of a sample. You have to be careful. Now in this case it is the standard deviation for the population and that is given to us now. Now suppose that a random sample of 50 bulbs of this brand has a mean and once again now this mean is referring back to the sample and so this is a sample mean of 493 hours. They ask us to find a 90% confidence interval for the true mean of all light bulbs in this brand and then uh, answer the question below. Let's take a minute and look at our notes. Now, as we talked about earlier, confidence intervals are a way for us to make predictions. We can go in here and make predictions about an unknown population parameter, in this case the population mean, if we have a representative sample. So in our sample we are going to know x bar and once again this is the sample mean. We're going to have n a sample size. We are trying to predict the population mean for all the lives of these light bulbs but for some reason we know the population standard deviation perhaps from an earlier experiment or in some other fashion we would know that in this case that will be given to us. Now the basic way of calculating um, all of the information that we need here is going to be done in these three parts. First of all we're going to have a certain amount of confidence. From that confidence we're going to use that to calculate an error. In other words, how much uh, mistake we're going to allow ourselves to have in this estimate. And then lastly, we'll compute the interval, which we put into Alex. So let's go back and make a few notes here about things that we know. And uh, let's go back and reread what we've already seen. First of all here, we have this standard deviation of 55. Okay, that standard deviation, as we said, is the population standard deviation. And so so we know then that that number is 55 and so let's make a note here. 55 is going to be our population standard deviation and of course that is 55 hours which is the average uh, standard deviation here we say for the length of life of these light bulbs so that's 55 hours over here that is given. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, suppose a random sample of 50 bulbs. Well, that's our sample size. And so what we can do is make a note over here that n, our sample size in this case, is going to be 50. So we're going to have 50 as our sample size. We also know then that we're going to have a mean, Now, once again this is a sample mean, it's referring back to this sample, of 493. So our x bar is going to be 493 hours. So we know that to be the case. And let's see what else we have here. Oh, we have a confidence level of 90 percent. So we're going to begin to work with that. Our confidence is 90 percent. Okay. What we're going to do then is to begin to work with this confidence. And what we're going to come up with there is what the uh, books call the Z alpha over 2 value. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, first of all, that means that we're looking for a z-score. Okay, it's going to be a z-score. So we need that. And obviously we're going to use our Alex calculator and a z button and we're going to get that from the normal curve as we've done many times before. But students will often ask, well, what's an alpha? What's that all about? Well, let's talk about that. First of all, alpha. Now that is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. 
which is very similar to our letter A, which is the first letter of the English alphabet. Now, A is the first letter of the word area. And in this context, area that we're talking about is the area that we are unsure of. Okay, so let's go back up here for a second and talk about confidence. Well, confidence is what you are sure of, and our confidence level here is 90%. So we will illustrate that confidence on the normal curve by cutting out an area of 0 0.90 right out of the middle of the normal distribution. Now, you can see if we are 90% confident, then that means that we must be 10% unsure. So our area that we are unsure of, our alpha value in this case, is going to be 10% or 0 0.10. Now notice here that this area that we are unsure of is divided up into two parts. We've got part of that area on the left, part of that area on the right. And so we would say then that alpha over 2 would be half of the area that you're unsure of. And so that area is going to be 5% or 0.05. Now, the z alpha over 2 then is going to be the z score that is associated with half of the area that you're not sure of. And of course, remember that the z button likes the right hand side. So let's just remember that this little area here is going to be 0 0.05. So what we're simply going to do is to hop back to our Alex calculator. We are going to hit the Z button. We're going to put in 0 0.05 because remember that is half of the area that you're unsure of and calculate the value. Now it tells us here that we should round uh, intermediate computations to at least three places. So if we were to round this number we would call it 1.645 and that value right there is our Z alpha over 2. Let's make a note. Z alpha over 2 is about 1.64523 decimal places. And we have accomplished the first major goal of our problem. Okay, from there we need to move on and calculate the amount of error. How far off could our estimate be? Well, the formula here tells us that to calculate the error, we are going to take our z alpha over 2 value, which is the 1.645. We're going to multiply that times sigma. Now remember, sigma, that is the population standard deviation, and this time that was known to be 55 hours up here. So we can simply bring that down and plug it in. And then, of course, we need to divide by the square root of n. Now, remember, n, that's our sample size. And over here, we had that. Our sample size was 50. So, in order to calculate our error, we can multiply the 1.645 times 55 and divide then by the square root of 50. In fact, we'll do that right now on our Alex calculator. And if we're careful, we will notice here that we've already got this number in. In fact, I won't round that. I'll just leave it like it is. Multiply then by our 55 and divide by the square root of our sample size, 50. We can do that calculation all in one operation. And here we have our error. So let's go back and make a note about that. So what we're going to want to do, 12.793 and a bunch of decimals. Okay. 
Okay. And now what we want to do then is to move into our last and final portion, and that is to calculate the interval. Okay. Now remember the interval itself is going to be around the sample mean someplace. And so they tell us here that to get that, you simply take the sample mean. Some books say this is the best point estimate. Or that makes it at the middle of your interval. And subtract the error, then add that amount of error. And let me show you a clever way to do that in the Alex calculator. Once again, I learned this from Professor Rosever's videos. And if we take a look at this error right here, let's uh, store that for a second and clear it. Bring up x bar. Remember, we're going to take x bar, which is the sample mean, which we said was 493. And we're going to add, then subtract. Look at this clever button right here. This plus and minus button means that we're going to add and then subtract the amount of error which we've stored here. And so we can recall that now. I'll go ahead and just leave all those decimals in there. We'll round it at the end. But when we hit equal, this is going to tell us both numbers that we want for our interval. And notice that we want to round our final answers to one decimal place. So our answers will be 480.2 and 505.2. 0.79, so we'll have to round up to 8. So what we can do now is go over here and make a note about that. 480.2, 505.8. Let's put that into Alex now. The low end, 480.2. The high end, 505.8. And I see that I need a zero here. 505.8. Let's check it. This is the confidence interval for the population mean with sigma known.